called an airship. I needed a house because I was just uh, getting married to Chris. And here it is 20 years later and we still live in it because it works. Very simple, easy to build. Uh, that's all beer cans plastered over. There's no doors, there's no wall. It's basically a series of U-shaped rooms all connected with a greenhouse. All of the glass is facing the sun and the low winter sun comes right in and floods the house and is absorbed into the massive walls of the tires and just stored there. Just heating wise, there's just no heating bill. There's no heating or cooling bill here. We have a fireplace, we use it on Christmas. That's it. It's a big deal to get ready for winter here because you can die because it gets 30 below, even 35 below zero Fahrenheit here. Your tongue can freeze to your lips if you aren't careful. It gets that cold. And here we've been living here almost 20 years with no heating system. That takes a huge bit of stress off of the person, but it also takes it off of the planet. This is a compound that we started working on uh, 30 years ago. This is like a little testing site, really. This whole decade of work here was just evolution. You couldn't worry about what it looked like, you just wanted it to work. Then we built a giant windmill here that's been taken off of the building now, and it worked so well that we had to build a building around it because it was about to take off. It made a huge amount of power. So all of these buildings just represent trial and error experiments and a learning situation. That's the first building right there. They call it the grandfather of Earthships because it was the first building that really tried to put it all together. This was the first absolutely off of all grids building that we did and maybe first one that was ever done. I mean, it's definitely a wild shape made to go up and get the wind. This was the first place where I put wind, solar, greenhouse, garbage building, everything together in one building, and this is what it ended up looking like. Everything was intense. Everything about what we were doing and the buildings and the life was just like absolutely striking intense the whole time. People would come out here and they'd never want to leave. It was a time of magic, that's what I can say. Living in that building I mean, this is like 25 years ago. I had my own power. I had food growing. I didn't need heat. I was like, Jesus Christ, man. I am free. I am absolutely free. The state of mind that that put you in. You can get up in the morning and you own your life. 
well, I can do whatever I want because I don't have to do anything to stay alive. We have the potential to enhance the planet. Trees enhance the planet, though people could go way further. I can see the Earth glowing like a sun just from what people do to it, just making the Earth sing like music rather than shit floating in rivers and chemicals in the air and, and stuff like that. I've always thought that if you're doing something right for people, they'll find you. We put it out there on a website. We wrote books that got out there. Of course, all the magazine articles and everything got out there, and it attracted some people that ended up working for us. They became our crew. Just, just three of us are coming back. It's not so much an adoption. It's more like a, a punishment, maybe? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or a parasitic relationship, one of the two. Uh, well, whatever it is, we can't get rid of it, so we're trying to all live with it. I found Phil in a bus station crying. I took him in under my wing, and uh, here he is. <laughs> Look at this drawing. I mean, I, can, I couldn't build a damn thing from that. <laughs> this is Ted. Where did you meet? How did you take that Uh He was shit on a rock, I believe. <laughs> Why am I doing this? <laughs> For money. <laughs> Is he going to get rich doing this? No. <laughs> yeah, he probably looks at us like his sons, and we look at him like a, you know, st like a stepdad, you know, that you can hang out and party with. And I always tell Mike that you just, you're like a freak magnet. He attracts the weirdest people, the weirdest clients. <laughs> to put the crew together to build a community for themselves, you can't get any better than that. So when we settled this community, we designated 10 acres, and they all got their memberships, which turned into actual building lots. But we all paid the same amount, and we all drew a number out of a hat, and then we got the lot that we got. I was so happy to own a small piece of land. I didn't even know how big it was until we got the survey here. I just knew it went from over there to over there, and then I could put my house kind of in the middle of it. It was fair, it was equal. The, the richer person couldn't afford the better lot, you know? There were people that got in for very, very affordable prices. You know, a down payment, less than spending a night out on the town at a fancy restaurant. It was uh, late September when we got out here and the first snow was starting to fall and we got out here late afternoon. Yeah, I was trained as an architect and then graduated and chose to live in a dirt hole and build a house around myself. <laughs> Pitch my tent, it's windy as fucking hell. I'd come home from work and my tent would be like blown over. Okay, well, I'll fucking fix my tent, go out and pound that evening, seven, eight more tires. It took us about five or six years to build the, the first part of it. And then we've added on, of course. But, uh, you know, we did it on weekends and out of pocket. So in about two months, I had my main U walls up, my tent right in the middle, blocked from the wind. I was like, this is fucking fantastic. You know what I mean? It was like, I got a wind block. We lived on the site in a little uh, tarp structure in the bottom of the excavation here. Living in dirt, living in uninsulated space, my water would freeze overnight. I mean, I didn't have a flush toilet until this February, 11 years later. I was inspired to build my Earthship by watching the amazing people around me who were doing it when they were pounding tires and living out of tarp tents, making spaghetti together on rainy nights and playing guitar and upside down wheelbarrows for chairs and having bonfires. I had never experienced a bunch of people working that hard. So I was like, wait a second, this isn't a bunch of hippies, you know? And I was like, yeah, there's the occasional hippie that this appeals to. But I was just like, this just made so much sense. Their story of, of them building their earth ships with half-baked ideas that weren't as cool as they are now and doing it themselves on no money 
and working for us, trying to make a little money to get by on while they're doing it. A dozen of them in that subculture did it, and now they're all sitting there happy as hell. She doesn't know the difference between this house and a, you know, a conventional home like that I grew up in. But it's just part of her that the house takes care of her and supplies power and heats itself and has plants that provide food and you know that's and the water comes from the roof. She knows all that and she thinks that's the way it is and that's the way everyone needs to think. This used to be my office. It's really probably about 30 years old. And these are the old uh, creosote, gallon creosote cans. You know, so we were just using everything. And this one was supposed to make you fly like a crow. So we wanted the, the vision of living this way to take off. But we were in magic land for sure, for a long time. You know, the crew always becomes like a family, and we would uh, work together for four, five, six years, and then another group, you know, they'd fade out and others would come in. Here in the last decade, though, uh, these people ain't going away. You know, the, the people that are with me now, they've been here 10 years. They say this is their life, and this is my life. And so they're beyond family. We're here for the duration. discover gold in your backyard, you have to work to keep it a secret. All of a sudden we're getting requests from all over the country and world to do earthships, earthship communities, and so on. So then I got the idea myself. Well, I'll do a community myself. It's an off-grid, sustainable community. Translate this into cities? Holy shit. I bought the land up at Reach to do the Reach community because I wanted to really challenge the concept on the slope of a mountain where no power water could be gotten or whatever. We learned the systems at Reach, power, water, and sewage. And it was, in fact, the first New Mexico sustainable testing site. Reach was successful. It's a huge bit of stress off of the person, but it also takes it off of the planet. to get ready for winter here because you can die because it gets 30 below or even 35 below zero Fahrenheit here. Your tongue can freeze to your lips if you aren't careful. It gets that cold. And here we've been living here almost 20 years with no heating system. That takes right in and floods the house and is absorbed into the massive walls of the tires and just stored there. Just heating wise, there's just no heating bill. There's no heating or cooling bill here. We have a fireplace. We use it on Christmas. That's it. 
it's a big called in our ship. I needed a house because I was just uh, getting married to Chris. And here it is 20 years later and we still live in it because it works. Very simple, easy to build. Uh, that's all beer cans plastered over. There's no doors, there's no wall. It's basically a series of U-shaped rooms all connected with a greenhouse. All of the glass is facing the sun and the low winter sun comes 